Hello everyone, I'm Eric D'Souza, and if you're a fan of Canadian crime history, you probably know my guest today, Vicky Delaney. Vicky's book, Murder in a Teacup, by Kensington Publishing Corp, has been nominated for the Who Done It Award for Best Traditional Mystery, sponsored by Jane Doe for uh, the Awards of Excellence 2022. Welcome, Vicky. How are you? I'm very well, Eric. It's lovely to chat to you. Thank you. Uh, now, Vicky's written over 40 books and is currently writing um, four cozy series. Uh, obviously, we can't talk about all your books in 15 minutes. Uh, so let's start with <laughs> your book that's been nominated, uh, Murder in a Teacup. Uh, it's the second of the T and the C mystery series. Uh, T by the so C. T by the C mystery yep. series. Uh, and the hero is Lily Roberts. So what's Lily That's up to right. in this one? Okay, so I'm going to show the cover if anybody would like to have a look. This is Murder in a Teacup. Um, and as you can see right away from this cover, this is a very cozy mystery. You have the tea, you have the cat, you have the pretty ocean scene, all um, characteristics of a cozy mystery. This is the second book in the series. The third is called uh, Murder Spills the Tea and it will be out in July. And it's set on Cape Cod and it's about a young woman who owns a traditional afternoon tea room where she serves traditional afternoon tea in grand style. Um, her grandmother owns the B&B &B that the property is on called Victoria on Sea and in true cozy fashion, um, they get up to all sorts of uh, murder and mayhem. Uh, a B&B a, a &B in particular, plus the tea room, gives me as the author lots of chance to have the characters wandering through, not only the victim, but you've got the victim and the suspects and all the people that you can lay red herrings for and, and you know, that sort of thing, which is important in a cozy mystery where the character has no real reason to be involved. Um, so they have to be quite closely involved right from the beginning as to what, what has happened. So Murder in a Teacup is basically about a family reunion at the B&B. &B. Um, right away, everybody can, or Lily and her grandmother Rose can see that the family doesn't seem to be getting on all that well, but they do celebrate with afternoon tea at Tea by the Sea. And oh my gosh, someone is poisoned by something slipped into his teacup. So because the police of course arrived, they shut down the tea room, they're looking for poison. Lily is afraid that her business is going to be ruined. The word spreads that people are murdered drinking her tea. Therefore, she has to set out with her grandmother, Rose, and her best friend, Bernadette, to uh, discover who the culprit is. All very light, very cozy, just intended to be a really nice, light, fun read. A summer read. <laughs> That's exactly so, right. So you were saying the third, or the, yeah, the third installment is coming up in July. That's uh, right. Before that, I don't know how you do it, but <laughs> the ninth book is in your Lighthouse Mystery Series, uh, so sorry, Lighthouse Library Book Series, uh, is coming out very soon, June 7th, uh, That's Death right. by Beach Read. <laughs> and that and that one, yeah, you use the pen name, uh, Eva Gate. I That's believe right. this is your longest running series. So. This is my longest running series. This is the ninth book. The 10th book has been, been finished. Um, so there'll be at least 10. I'm certainly hoping there'll be a couple more. So my publisher's listening, hint, hint. Uh, yeah, so it has been not only my longest running series, but my most successful series. Um, and um, so, yeah, it's it's another cozy series. Once again, as you can see by the cover, um, very cozy set in a library in the lighthouse, this time in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Once again, we have the cat. You know, we have the book because it's about a library. Um, so, yeah, so I'm certainly into cozies these days. I started my career writing standalone, standalone psychological suspense. I wrote an eight part police detective series. I wrote a four part series set in the Klondike Gold Rush. And I also wrote novellas for adult literacy. But now I have gone firmly over to the light side and I'm writing cozy mysteries. Yeah, I was looking at your book covers today and I think the first T by the C doesn't have a pet on it. <laughs> no, <rare>. it doesn't. <laughs> an oversight, an oversight for sure. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I have to catch up on that series, but one that you just recently started and I really enjoyed uh, was the um, your historical one that you're doing in the Catskills, uh, Deadly Summer Night. So how long do we have to wait for the next one of that? And do you, like, you did do the Klondike one. It was your first foray, right. I guess, historical. You're revisiting yeah. the historical. Are you enjoying writing about the past? 
I am. Um, you know, the, this is set during, it's not that far back as the Klondike series. This is set in the Catskills, the great Catskills resorts in their heydays of uh, the 1950s. This is the second book in the series. First was Deadly Summer Nights, Deadly Director's Cut, because a, you know, a film crew comes, they're filming a movie at the Catskills. So it's also all about Hollywood glamour. And I, I enjoyed that. One of the things that I particularly found really good about writing doing historical research for the 50s, is there's actually movies and TV shows that were made at that time that you could watch, not just, you know, any historical, you can see a historical movie set in the Roman times, but Romans didn't make it. Whereas in the 1950s, you can actually see what people looked like and how they spoke and how they did their hair and the kind of clothes they wear and wore and all that. And um, I, I really liked watching those old Fred Astaire dance movies and things like that to sort of really get into, uh, into the feel of it. Yeah. And another thing about the Catskills is there's so many people who um, who were there in the war years, both as guests and as workers and hotel owners that have written about it. So there's a real wealth of information there. For that. Um, well, let's talk about the genre in itself. Um, some of your peers who are also in the traditional category, uh, who done it award, uh, insist that they don't write cozies. Um, but other people often interchange the word cozy and traditional. What's your take on that? Well, um, I think a cozy is always a traditional, but a traditional doesn't always have to be a cozy. A traditional mystery to me means a puzzle mystery um, where um, a murder has been committed or sometimes another type of crime. Um, it's up to the detective. It can be a police officer in a traditional mystery or it can be an amateur detective to solve the crime. But it's up, the author must lay the clues down in such a way that the astute reader has a genuine chance of discovering what happened at or shortly before the same time as the detective does. So the, the concept of playing fair. In fact, it's almost to me a game of wits between the writer and the reader. Can the reader be truly surprised, but yet on rereading the book, they should, if they want to do that, they should be able to see clues all are laid out quite well um, so it's a matter of having enough red herrings and false clues, and then very subtly dropping the real clues in. So that to me is what encompasses a traditional mystery. I think a cozy, I would describe it as lighter. To me, a cozy mystery is about a group of people that have a very pleasant lives. They live in a very pleasant town of some sort. They have a good group, circle of friends. They might have the odd enemy, but there's no real tragedy in their lives. And a lot of cozy mysteries, somebody has been widowed or the main character might've you know, been widowed. So there might be some tragedy in their past, but in their current lives, they're not. Meaning that you know, for, there's not gonna be any case of child abduction. There's certainly not gonna be any school shootings. Um, there's not going to be international mob or terrorists. It might, you might think the mafia has come to town. It might look like it's a mafia hit, but it will turn out not to be. So at the end, the people who live in this very pleasant little town have resolved the problem and the town has been restored to, to harmony, so to speak. So to me, it's that lack of, of tragedy in people's lives that's the hallmark of a genuine cozy. And then there's all the little things that get thrown in. There's usually a pet. It's often in a holiday or destination. Character has a quirky job. Not that working in a library is necessarily quirky, but something that appeals to the reader in terms of their job. They're not a bank manager or something like that. Okay. So. Thank you, Vicki. That, uh, I think that sums it up really fast and really well. Um, if anybody out there, if you're a member of Crime Minds of Canada, uh, Vicki did a webinar for us uh, earlier this year, I believe the beginning of this year. You can find it in our members only section. And uh, instead of just getting a tip of the iceberg, we talked about cozies for a full hour. That was a great conversation. Right. So you can find that in our members only section of Crime Writers of Canada. Now, on top of all the writing, you also do events. So do you have anything coming up? I don't. Um, hopefully, um pandemic stuff is starting to um, fade and, and you know we'll get back to doing some real events. I have spoken to a couple of bookstores about doing something for Murder Spills the Tea at the end of July. Um, and nothing's confirmed. They're all being a little leery and that's just perfectly fine. Um, I, I am, I'm looking forward to September. I'm going to participate in the, um, the Friends of the Conan Doyle Library is celebrating their 50th birthday. And I'm scheduled to do an appearance for there because I also write the Tada Sherlock Holmes bookshop series. 
<laughs> so I am uh, looking forward to doing a real live panel at that event at the end of September. So let's let's fingers are crossed and let's hope that uh, that goes on ahead. I do a fair amount of online things, and if people want to know what I'm doing, such as this, if people want to know what I'm doing, you know, follow my Facebook page or my Instagram or drop me a line at VickyDelaney.com. Perfect. Uh, I also believe you're doing a virtual event in the next few days. I I'm working as a volunteer there for the Maple Leaf oh, Conference. I'm sorry. <laughs> of course I am. I am at um, the Maple Leaf Mystery Conference. And on Saturday, I am the author in the spotlight. I think my time's two o'clock. Don't swear to it. Go onto the website and have a look. I think it's two o'clock. Um, I'm being interviewed by my really good friend, Mary Jane Buffini. Um, and I ha haven't got a clue what she's going to ask me. She's not giving me any of the questions ahead of time. Um, I think it's going to be great fun. Uh, registration is open for um, um, for the rest of the week. Um, Maple Leaf Mystery Conference. Just look that up, and I'm sure you can find it if you're interested in uh, joining in. Yeah, if you're watching this video today, it immediately started yesterday. And we, uh, uh, I didn't interview her, but um, Maureen Jennings was on, and uh, Ian Rankin's going to be Friday. And you yeah. actually... Our, uh, I guess the headline is ending it on Saturday. That's right. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it's going to be cloudy and rainy, so nobody will feel like working in their garden or anything on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> good point. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you again, Vicky. Uh, right. Good luck, actually, tomorrow. Is it That's tomorrow right. already? <laughs> the awards yeah. are tomorrow, so good luck. Thank you. Thank very you much. very much. That nice talking to you. Bye. Bye.